In this course, I will show you how to use Amos uh, to test your model. Uh, but there are many other software, SEM software packages that can be used. Uh, and if you have a look at them, you see that they are very similar. I mean, even um, CBSEM and VBSEM software packages, they are very similar. So um, all these software packages that I know, they um, provide the model feed, um, they test all parameters, give you a report of all direct, indirect relationships, factor loadings, and they can um, they even can be used to compare different models um, so all at the same time so by one click they just give you everything that you need and this is one of the advantages of structure equation modeling software packages compared with let's say and the method SEM method compared with regression analysis right so or um, those let's say the first generation um, techniques statistical techniques we, they are in that book it, they are called first general those regression analysis or um, other efa tests they are called uh, let's say uh, first generation and scm is referred um, they, they describe it as a second generation so they give you all information that you need by one click all at the same time and they are very user friendly i later i will show you just throw the model and click and you get the results but before um before we, um, I show you the um, software packages um, and Amos, I want to um, share a few terms with you. So what you can see here is a path diagram, right? So what is a path diagram? As I mentioned in one of the videos, uh, path diagram shows the relationship between the variables in your model and how the variables or latent constructs are measured, right? For example, here you have um, let's say um, four constructs you remember I said that uh, constructs or latent variables they are shown using oval or circle or round shapes and you use some boxes to show the observed variables so in this model I have four constructs subjective norms image attitude and intention and I measure subjective norms with five questions and I measured image using six questions, attitude with five questions, and intention with four questions. So these part, this part, for example, that shows the items and the construct, they are the measurement models. So you can see the measurement model for subjective norms is here, image is here, attitude is here, so an intention here. So for measure by measurement model, I mean the construct and how you measured it. And here, as you can see, with four questions, right? And what do we mean by structural model? Means the relationship between the variables, the constructs. For example, the hypothesis, let's say, right? In some cases, in most cases. So the relationship between subjective norms, attitude, and intention, and image is this relationship is in the scope of structural model. So we have two types of models, measurement model and structural model. Measurement model is about how you measure subjective norm how you measure image how you measure attitude how you measure intention so in measurement model we don't talk about the relationship between these constructs but when you go to structure model we want to test our hypothesis we want to test the relationship between the construct direct and indirect relationship between the constructs now there are a few terms that i want to share with you so uh, here you can see um, uh, uh, there's a uh, um, double-headed arrow uh, it's like a curve it's co it's uh, it shows the covariance between the independent variables here you can see you have one independent variable two and the relationship between the independent variables is shown using a covariance is a uh, there are two heads here right uh, why we need a covariance because in social science we assume that always there is relationship between all uh, variables so between subjective norms and image in my model I didn't I mean the theoretical model I didn't link them but here I link them why because of course there's a relationship between everything in social science except you have a very strong theoretical support that there's no relationship between them so by default we just draw a covariance so maybe you can just keep this in mind when you draw a model in SEM using Amos you just draw a covariance between all independent variables then what else we have these, as I mentioned, they are observed variables, they are boxes, and this 
the oval shape or the round shapes are latent constructs. What else? These are path. Path shows the relationship between the variables, the main variables that are our main variables, right? Or the constructs. So the relationship between subjective norms and intention is shown using a single headed arrow and it's called a path. And we have some small uh, round shapes here, which are disturbance or error terms. And why do we need an error term? You remember when I talked about reflective constructs, I said the main constru the construct is explaining the items. But the construct, of course, it cannot 100% with 100, uh, the construct cannot explain the 100% of variance of one question. So if we, in this, in this case, if subjective norms explaining, let's say 80% of the variance of subjective norm one, means the question one to measure subjective norms, then what about the 20% left? The 20% left for the variance that is not explained by subject construct is explained by some other error, other factors that we call it as error terms or disturbance. Let me tell you in this way that for example, you want to measure subjective norms, you have five questions. You remember I told you none of these items are perfect. They have some measurement errors, right? So we are, we are showing those measurement errors with these error terms, right? So yeah, what else we have here? Oh, one more. Do you see these errors? They are not linked to the items. So what are they? Because no model can 100% uh, can explain the 100% of the variance of dependent variables, right? For example, in this model, image, attitude, and subjective norms, they are explaining or predicting intention. So these three variables are, are predicting intention, but they cannot fully predict intention. Always there are some errors, right? So uh, let's say these three variables can explain 40% or 50% or 60% of the uh, variance of intention, right? This means the rest has been explained by other factors that we do not, we have not included in our model. And we show them with an error term or this their disturbance or residual. So this is the error term that we always, we need to put it on a dependent variable, right? For example, attitude is explained by image and subjective norms. Of course, we cannot predict with 100% you know, uh, accurately, accuracy. Uh, we, cannot, uh, with, yeah, we cannot explain uh, attitude uh, with 100%, let's say, accuracy using just these two variables. These two variables may explain 40% of attitude. So what about the other 60%? There are other factors that we did not include in the model. So you may include more factors to predict attitude and then uh, more variance of this attitude will be explained by your model, but, still, but you should not reach to 100%, right? You never can, I mean, based on the models that we develop, you, you cannot explain 100% of attitude. So what about the left? What about, what about the rest? What is not explained by the model is shown with an error term, right? So just keep this in mind. When you draw a model, when you have a variable like this that uh, is explained by other factors in the model, don't forget to include an error term there as well, right? Now, there are two terms that are used in many textbooks, exogenous variables and endogenous variables. Exogenous variables means those variables that their variance are not explained by the factors in the model. Or in other words, there is no single headed arrow that goes to those variables. Subjective norms here, there is no single headed arrow that goes to subjective norms. Means subjective norms is not explained in this model. Subjective norms is used to explain other factors like attitude and intention in this model. We call it exogenous variables. Means there are other external factors that we did not include in the model and they are explaining subjective norms. Image is the same. There's no single headed arrow that goes to image. Means there's no factor in the model that impacts image. So in other words, they're independent variables, right? So independent, they're independent from this independent, their variance is independent from the model. So subjective norms and image are exogenous variables. And here, intention. Intention is explained by three factors. So 
intention is an endogenous variable. So endogenous variables, they have at least one single headed arrow that goes to them. For example, you see there are three single headed arrow that goes to intention. This means intention is an endogenous variable, means we are explaining intention using some factors in this model. Now, can you tell me whether attitude in this model is an exogenous variable or endogenous variable? There is a quiz that you need to answer after this video. Uh, but there are a few more terms that I want to share with you. Uh, when you run the model in Amos, you will get the results as you can see here uh, on the model. So, for example, this is uh, here what you see. You can get the results for standardized values and unstandardized values that I will explain later. But um, here what you see is standardized values. So, this shows the correlation between subjective neurons and image is 0.38 and here you can see the factor loadings right means the relationship between the importance of these factor these items for the factor right so it's a correlation between image and the items to measure image so higher is better right so here we have 0 0.8 0 0.8 i think 6 or 8 i cannot read it 0 0.77 and yeah so these are factor loadings factor loadings and factor loadings right and here also factor loadings what else do you see here? Uh, the relationship between the factors or constructs and we call the, we name, we name these or as path. Now, what is the, uh, these values? These are path coefficients. And again, you can get them as standardized values or unstandardized values. So you get the, here I have shown you the standardized path coefficients. Standardized path coefficients means uh, here, for example, attitude and intention is 0 0.27 means there is a positive relationship between attitude and intention and they can vary between minus 1 to positive 1 if they are standardized. We will discuss all these things later, so don't worry about them. Just showing you that you will get the results and the name of these are factor loadings and these are path coefficients. And what about this? You see here at the corner, you see 0 0.44 here, 0 0.23 here, and there's nothing here. These are called squared multiple correlations. You already have heard maybe from uh, previous uh, modules or courses uh, that about R square, right? So this is actually R square, but in structure equation modeling, we name them as uh, squared multiple correlations. So 23% and 44%. 44% means 44% of the variance of intention is explained by these three factors in the model. 23% means 23% of the variance of attitude is explained by these two factors in the model because these two are predicting attitude, right? So if it, this one is 44%, this means 56% of the variance of intention is not explained by the model. And this is the reason we put the error term here. So this error term represents 56% of the variance, uh, the factors that impact the variance of intention. So this is what you get. And when you get the path diagram, you can go through them and, and see whether the path coefficients are significant and what is the sign of them and blah, blah, blah. 